fuel injection, a modern marvel of delivering optimized fuel quantities in the modern engine environments you see today. And the thing with those systems is they are full of complex parts. Now today, we're gonna take you through that process. We're gonna look at our print, we're gonna look at the tolerances, we're gonna look at the tooling, the tips, tricks, nuances, and other techniques to take you from that raw stock to a perfect part the very first time on our Puma TT behind me. Let's get to it. I went ahead and backed off my rougher 30 thou. That will allow me to take two finish passes that are exactly the same and dial this part in perfectly the first time. So with that, let's, uh, let's make some chips. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna face off the part. We're gonna leave about 15 thou for a finish pass. Now I will usually rough and finish the face pass. There's not a lot of material on here. Some may want to go ahead and finish that immediately. I don't like to do that usually because if I face at Z0 before I turn anything down, uh, sometimes that face, if it's big, can have a tendency to maybe bow out or whatnot once you remove all that material. And so as a habit, I'm always gonna rough and finish face. All right, so our diameter now is at about 0.911. That's 60 thou away, which again allows me to take those two even finish passes to bring us to 850. Chips turned really well on that. Um, almost all my turning is gonna be done with a KC5410 insert grade. Um, nice insert, breaks a good chip, really good for uh, non-ferrous materials, which this brass obviously is. Um, so like I say, not much to complain about. She turned really well, really nice, even without coolant. Uh, let's go ahead, we're gonna put a hole in it with a drill, and we're gonna finish this part out. So here we go, we got a 9 16 drill. Um, I legit don't know if it's gonna make it all the way down there with no coolant. We're gonna find out. It's smoking, it's smoking, nice man. Now, one thing to note is our finish diameter is not much bigger than this drill right here. This drill is a 916.5625, and my finish diameter here is 0 0.580. So that means I'm only really taking off about 10 thou per wall. So if I go to finish bore this and I have some rough material left over, I'm gonna wanna check the position of my drill. It could be off an X, it could be off an Y, but anything too far off center will end up scrapping this part. So you wanna make sure you really dial in your holder and make sure you check your finish pass, make sure everything cleans up nice. Now our next tool we're gonna be using is a face groover. Let's make some chips. Now this is a unique face groove in that it is right up next next to the shaft here and that makes it tricky to get in there with a the tool a lot of face groovers are designed to kind of plunge into the front of a part and they don't have to go that deep here because we've got to be along that shaft we need something that will plunge in there and clear that radius so horn went ahead and sent us a pretty cool face groover it's a horizontal mount with a modular blade that attaches on there and allows us to get in there and really cut that face groove without interfering with that shaft on the inside right there now face grooving can be a little tricky to dial in sometimes and that's because we're working with two diameters we have an inner diameter and an outer diameter now i can't just bump my tool out or make it cut bigger to dial in this inner diameter here because i will overcut most likely on this outer diameter so what i did is i broke up my face grooving into my roughing and my finishing cycles i went ahead and ran the roughing cycle roughly where i know that insert's going to cut and for my finish i'm going to go ahead and run it but i'm only going to run this inner diameter I programmed it like that so I can watch it I can single block it if I need to I'll bump it out I'll make it cut bigger and I'll cut this inner diameter I will then stop it before it cuts the outer diameter here make my measurement then run the whole thing again and I'll have one perfectly dialed in face through all right so with that let's go ahead and uh, let's finish her up The only thing I'm not liking is at the bottom of that face groove down, in, down inside there, we are getting chatter. Now, face grooves are notorious 
for this kind of chatter. You basically got the full surface of that insert touching down there. It's a lot of material to drag across and it tends to vibrate. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm going to, I'm gonna slow down the speed when I hit the face right there and see if that'll clean up the bottom for us. Okay, so it took a few passes, but we got this face groove correct. So I had to really slow everything down. I ended up going about 200 RPMs, which is really, really slow, but it was enough to go ahead and give us a smooth finish on the floor. So with that feature done, now we are gonna go ahead, we're gonna finish and we're gonna cut the OD here. Let's get it done. So as you can see, I'm coming across the face. I'll come down again, like I talked about, I'll turn down datum A. I'm gonna wrap it out, I'm gonna come down, cut the data B, and then cut the other two diameters. Now because I turn that 0 0.950 diameter with my groove tool, I don't need to cut it with my finish tool. So we have a lot going on here to talk about after we did this finish pass. Our first major problem that we noted with the indicator was that run out of over 2,000 in the front. I did end up slowing the RPMs down to 1,500, which is pretty slow, but it did allow me to get my run out here on the front down to about 4 tenths. Now that's still uh, much better than the 2,000 that we had before. Now a couple things to note is if you're quoting this job, you may want to consider that, that you have to slow everything down to run this part. Now another couple things you could do, uh, you could maybe shore up your bar liner, right? There could be a little bit of a gap in there allowing that bar to bounce just a little bit too much. If you can clean that up, that would help. Um, you could potentially probably cut these parts into pucks and not have all that bar down there, and that might also make a difference for you as well. But for us, we dropped it to 1500. I think that's going to be the go-to. And one last final thing to note, we do have a tight tolerance on that face groove. We have a plus or minus one on that depth, so you want to get in there and make sure that both your face groove and your turning tool are running together, which they should be if you touched off on the probe but sometimes people will change one insert out and forget to retouch off and you can cause a little discrepancy and it doesn't take much. We're talking about plus or minus a one. So you wanna check that in the machine and make sure that's good before you pull that part out. Okay, so that was a lot. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish up this ID and then the part will be ready for transfer. All right, let's get it done. have a 3 8 carbide boring bar which is small enough to get in there but it's not really long enough to stick out the whole way to bore the whole ID there without introducing some significant chatter so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna bore halfway and then we'll talk about matching up that on the other side Okay, so our op one side is now complete. We went ahead, we dialed in the bore. It was nice and perfect, really, in all honesty, within a tenth. So with that, we are gonna go ahead and we are now gonna grab this part uh, with our sub chuck over here and we're gonna part it off and we'll transfer it to the other side. All right, here we go. goes ahead and it pulls that part out and it brings material out for the next op one that we're going to cut off that bar. And our parting tool is going to come in, it's going to part off here, leaving a little bit for the face pass right there. And then 
it's going to now transfer that part over to our sub. We're going to come in first, we're going to do, we're going to face it and we're going to turn it again. We're going to leave 15 thou for that finish tool, which is a 15-6 nose radius. No face screws, no drills this time, so it should be a quicker process to wrap this up. Next, we're gonna finish the face and the OD, dialing it in just like we did the first side. Okay, so what a difference that makes. Now, if you remember on that first side, when we ran that part at 3,000 RPMs, we ended up with over 2,000 of runout built into our diameter, which wasn't gonna work. Now, if you look over here, we only have one tenth of runout and we spun at the same RPMs. If you remember, I had talked about that big bar being inside of there and vibrating, and that's exactly what's going on. Here we have a much smaller piece, and so we're able to spin much faster in there for get a much more acceptable run out. All right, so with that, this part is almost complete. We have a groove to cut and we're gonna finish the ID and then we'll have some inspection to do to check all those crazy run out tolerances. Let's get to it. Nothing too complicated about this programming. Rough, leave about five thou, finish. All right, so we've machined our groove. It's on size. We have one more feature to do, and then this part will be ready to inspect. All right, so it's time to dial in our ID on OP2. Now, if you remember on OP1, we already cut half the ID. Really long, short, boring bar, can't do the whole thing in one shot. So what I'm gonna do is when I dial this in, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut this diameter to be just a little bit bigger than the diameter that I cut on OP1. That will allow me that when I come in with that boring bar, once I reach my depth, I will go ahead and taper in just a little bit. It will be the tiniest little taper of a line. So it will go from the little bit bigger diameter right into and past the diameter I cut on OP1. And that should give me a nice seamless transition resulting in essentially one diameter for that part. So with that, uh, we got our measurement. Let's go ahead and make our bump out and we'll finish up this part. All right, so the diameter did come out a little bit bigger than our off one side. That's exactly what we're looking for. When we pull this part out, we'll go ahead and drop a pin through and make sure we got a nice smooth transition all the way through the part. We'll also check some of those tight runout tolerances that we mentioned. Also do some surface finish checks and make sure everything pans out. All right, let's get her out of here.
So our part came out about 99% correct, but this is no chemistry exam, right? And 99% is not a passing grade for a part. That run out that we were concerned about on this front diameter right here from that high RPM, that did indeed come probably about four tenths out. And we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a part and spec. So we're gonna go back out to the machine. We're gonna cut the bar up this time into single parts like we talked about earlier. We'll switch out our jaws from through jaws to step jaws, and we'll go ahead and make that perfect part. Now, machining is a process and nothing is more satisfying or gratifying or brings me more pleasure than finding a flaw in our process and going to fix it. We had a run out problem. We went out, made our corrections. Now we can go ahead, chop up the rest of our bar, load up the halter, and let automation take care of the rest. So if you liked today's video, you learned something, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And if you didn't, well, kiss my brass.